Bill wants to know, what kind of maintenance should I be doing for my hydraulic disc brakes? Maintaining your brakes is one of the most important things you can do to ensure a fun, safe ride when you jump on your bike. Anytime you're working with disc brakes, it's important to make sure you keep things clean and free of contaminants. Contaminating the pads or the rotor will compromise braking performance, possibly to an unsafe extent. With that said, here are some tips for checking your brakes and procedures for combating some common issues that may arise. Under regular riding conditions, disc brake noise can be caused by a number of things, but it's usually the sign of old pads, a misaligned caliper, or a bent rotor. First, remove the wheel and visually inspect the pads in the caliper. If it looks like the pad material is wearing down and starting to get close to the back plate, it's a good idea to pull them for a closer look. If you determine that the pads are worn and it's time for a new set, there's more to it than just throwing in a new set of pads. As pads wear, the pistons in the caliper extend to accommodate for the thinner pads. So before you throw in the new pads, the pistons need to be reset and pushed back into the caliper. I usually end up using the handle of a cone wrench because they fit in the caliper nicely and the rubber coating helps protect the piston and caliper from damage. Don't use something sharp or too hard because you could damage the piston and ruin the brake. It's also important to press the piston in the center and have it retract as straight as possible. You will likely have to go back and forth from one side to the next a few times before both pistons are fully retracted. Once the pistons are reset and you have the new pads in, you'll want to check and make sure everything is still tight and secure. Start by making sure the rotor bolts are torqued down to the manufacturer's spec. On a 6-bolt rotor, torque the bolts in a star pattern. Center lock rotors only have one lock ring, so it, once it's torqued to spec, you'll be good to go. Once the rotor bolts or lock ring are torqued, put the wheel back in and check to see if the caliper is properly aligned with the rotor. Ideally, you want the caliper to be centered around the rotor with equal space on either side. The easiest way to do this is to loosen both caliper bolts just enough so the caliper moves freely side to side. Once the caliper is loose, squeeze the brake lever for the caliper you are aligning and hold it down while you retighten the brake bolts. Release the brake lever and check to see that the caliper is aligned with even space on both sides of the rotor. With some internally routed brake hoses, this method may not work because the hose itself puts pressure on the caliper moving it one way or the other. Remedy this by adjusting the angle of the banjo nut that the hose is attached to by loosening the bolt just enough to get it to move. Then rotate it to an angle that doesn't put added stress on the line and smooths out the bend. Adjustable banjo nuts are more common on mountain brakes, so if your brake doesn't have an adjustable banjo, it may take a little trial and error to get things properly aligned. Loosening the bolt and aligning the caliper by hand can take several tries, but it's worth the effort once it's done. The most common cause of disc brake headaches would have to come from a bent rotor. Bent rotors are quite common, especially on mountain bikes where rotors tend to be a bit larger and are more exposed to obstacles on the trail. But sometimes, even a brand new rotor can come out of the box with enough of a bend in it to cause a rub. Although rotor bends are more common on the mountain, it can happen on the road, but the solution is the same for both. You're going to have to bend it back. While it's easier to fix a bent rotor with a wheel and a truing stand, you can also leave the wheel in your frame. Dedicated rotor truing tools make the job easier and more precise, but a crescent wrench works in a pinch. Just scrub the jaws well so nothing will contaminate the rotor. Rotate the wheel and visually inspect the rotor going through the caliper, looking for points of contact. It can often be very hard to see exactly where the rotor is hitting the pads, so getting an ear close to the rotor and listening for the rub works well, especially for smaller bends. Once the bend in the rotor is identified, move that spot out of the caliper and bend it slightly in the opposite direction. Work in small increments to avoid overbending the rotor and making it rub on the other side. If you're using a truing stand, attach a zip tie to the arm of the truing stand on the disc side with the tail pointed towards the rotor and trim the zip tie to almost touch the rotor. Spin the wheel and watch to see where the rotor either hits the zip tie or moves away from it and bend the rotor back in the opposite direction, again working in small increments. Once the rotor is straight on the truing stand, move it to the bike and double check to make sure it's not rubbing. Fixing a bent rotor can be quite time consuming, but a rub free brake is worth the effort, so don't get frustrated if it takes a little longer than expected. Once you're done, you should have a brake and rotor combo that's working to its full potential and will no longer give you and your buddies a headache while out on the road or the trail. If you want your question asked on Ask a Mechanic, presented by Art Cyclery, send your inquiry to webletters at competitorgroup.com.